the mandatory evacuation. And uh, uh, it's going to start, it's close to dark. Eight, we went ahead and put a time, 8.30 p.m. to 6 uh, p.m. Uh, is the, going to be the curfew. And we certainly know that there are citizens that uh, at certain points that may have to have access. And uh, we asked them to call the city so that we can make arrangements with the police department to provide the access. So I'm going to go ahead and sign the order. Now, after uh, an extensive talk in, uh, with the uh, National Weather Service, the River Authority projections, we have decided to bring down the scope, uh, and not include the entire west side. Uh, we have maps that we can distribute to you, but basically it's the area uh, that floods the most, uh, bordered by uh, Outwood Street, Amelia Avenue, uh, that runs back into Milam Street. That whole area there uh, is where the uh, order is for. Uh, we feel very confident now, closer to the event, that we can bring the size and scope of that down. Certainly, we're going to keep monitoring uh, the weather, but uh, we don't expect any uh, substantial rain until around Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So we'll be monitoring that. Uh, as I've stated before, the worry there is that with the river up, uh, our city can't drain properly. So we want to make sure uh, that no one's going to be in harm's way or that this incident isn't going to progress to the rest of the community. So um, the maps are posted in the back. If you'd like a copy of it, uh, we have that available to you uh, again. Um, as far as further press conferences, we are not going to have any because tomorrow is when we're going to have the event. We're all going to be working for our citizens, so uh, you can contact our information officer, Paula Favors, and she'd be glad to give you updates. But we're all going to be out in the field helping our citizens, uh, so we won't be having a formal type thing unless a significant event happens of some sort. Uh, and then we would, we would set up and do a press conference, but we're not planning on doing it. Did you say now for, you, you talked about the scope being about 300 homes and 1,000 people the last time, can you can you reclassify as to how many homes and people we're talking about? I would probably, it's it's less than 30 homes. Oh, and uh, from the uh, the work that the, the police department's done and all the, all the uh, public safety folks is that most of the people in this area have already left. So uh, other than maybe one person uh, that we're gonna monitor, uh, make sure. Now, we have an ordinance in the city, uh, and we're going to certainly talk to that person. I may have to go over there and take some pecan pie and coffee or something to talk to this person that, that may, and he may be already gone, we don't know, but uh, we have an ordinance that says that once this order's signed uh, and uh, we don't have access, uh, uh, it's going to cost that individual to get rescued. So we want to make them well aware of that, and if we're going to have to put people in harm's way. Uh, we've added it up to close to a thousand dollars. So why the curfew? Why it's not given for the curfew? Well, because it, it's uh, you know we want people to have faith in their government uh, and that we can protect their belongings. And when we ask them to leave their their houses and their belongings behind, that we reassure them that we can definitely guard guard them. And uh, we just want to keep people out of the area. Uh, in the past, uh, you know the way that that river creeps up and the water comes up. Uh, it's not only just the water, but the, all the snakes and stuff that come with it. We definitely don't want anybody uh, getting injured. That, there's no excuse for anybody to lose their life or to get injured. We've had plenty of times. Unlike the poor folks that have been hit by flash floods in Houston in the hill country, they didn't have time to plan like we did. And so that's why it's, that's why we've had this gradual progression and there's not been a, a reason to, to rush. Uh, because we have an opportunity to get as much information uh, to do that. The curfews have worked well in the past, so we're going to continue that, that process. Is it a citywide curfew? No, just in the affected area. And are there still voluntary evacuations to the western side of town, or is that not you would think? It, and, and we made the decision this area, and the rest of the area does not have to, even, even a voluntary. It's just, it's just this stuff. area uh, that we're mandating uh, and moving forward. Uh, so and it makes things a lot easier for us, but 
I, I didn't base my decision on anything other than the water that was coming down the river and the rain uh, that could possibly not only flood that area, but the rest of the town. And Mayor, have you um, already spoken to this person? I mean, this person is aware of the liability. Yes, it's been spoken many times. And, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, not everybody's at everybody's same pace. So and we understand that. We're very fortunate to be a small town to give that extra, you know, attention uh, to our citizens to, to explain to them. And uh, like I said, if it takes a day to come out there with a little pecan pie, a cup of coffee, well, whatever it takes. In this part of town, there have been some people who have said that more needs to be done with drainage projects to prevent this from happening. Is there anything the city can do to prevent this part of the city from going underwater? Yeah, you know, if anybody out there wants to write an $11 million check, we can start on that, on that tomorrow. Uh, but the city has been actively involved in the core project. 65% of our community lies in the floodplain. And so what we've done is we've partnered with, with the River Authority, uh, uh, Corps of Engineers, uh, and our Congress and we finally see some construction money coming next year to hopefully maybe, you know, the first thing we worry about is creep from the river coming up our drainage. And we have some, what they call, flapper gates that we can shut to keep that from happening. Uh, and there's some areas that we need to start doing that. The levee project along the river and also the uh, channelization north of us is all uh, encompassed in that plan so that uh, our entire community comes out of the 100 year floodplain and we won't have to be worrying about this anymore. We built an extensive coalition of all the communities up and down the Colorado River, the counties and the cities, and uh, this is how we've been able to uh, uh, let them also identify that we had the most to lose here. And so that's why we not only had one act of Congress to get to that point, we had three of them to move this project down. So, it hasn't come quick enough for me. I haven't lived here all my life, but at least we're seeing some daylight to try to prevent this from happening in the future. Any other questions? If not, we thank you very much for getting the word out. Y'all have been very helpful. Solamente para los medios en español. ¿Qué es lo que va a firmar ahora? Es el ordenar a decir que es tiempo que salir para salir, pero la área que es más chico que, que estaba uh, en primero. So vamos a, a decirle a la gente y, y, y uh, nosotros uh, creemos que ya no más es un, una persona que está ahí. Y, y ahorita vamos a, a poner los, uh, a hablar con él y, y decirle que ya es tiempo y, y qué, qué podemos hacer a, 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 para que se sale de ahí. 30 casas afectadas nada más. Uh, más uh, 20 a 30. Pa, y, no más a mirar aquí. Uh, y, y, pero ya, muchos ya se, se llevan. Y la última pregunta, el curfew, el toque de queda, ¿de qué se trata? Uh, es para personas, ya no vamos a, a dejar personas entrar en, este, en esta uh, sección de la, del pueblo. Gracias. Sí. Mm-hmm.